Development at Cyber Peace Foundation. So, welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Nidhi. Thank you for inviting me for the session. I thank Dr. Behra, Dr. Indu, uh, Dr. Angel, and Dr. Bharti for inviting me always for the SRG session. And uh, uh, I want to tell the participants, it may be the last session uh, of your uh, entire program. And it is also the session post lunch. So uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, this is the least important session, but this is actually uh, the very, very, very important session, as Ms. Nidhi had put it, that uh, uh, when you are working online, uh, the safety of your data and your own safety and the safety of your students is paramount. So uh, in, in that case, uh, it becomes very important to uh, follow the safe internet practices. Uh, Ms. Nidhi, I just want to ask you that participants are from which states so that I can uh, pitch my presentation accordingly in Hindi or English? Ma'am, they are from Northeast and two are from South. So you can continue in English. Okay, thank you. So uh, let me start with my session. I'll try to make the session as engaging as possible. Uh, and then that is number one. And number two is that I want to answer your questions. So uh, I request you to kindly keep on putting your questions in the chat box. And uh, at the end of the session, we will definitely have a 15 minutes question answer session. And uh, so uh, it's very, very important that uh, uh, you learn a lot from the session and it will be my endeavor uh, to actually uh, share the best with you so that you can use the potential of internet, the learning resources to the, uh, to the very best for your uh, students. So let me start sharing my screen and uh, we start with the presentation. Till the time ma'am is starting her presentation, <coughs> I would like to request the rest of the participants to please uh, switch on your video so that it will be easy to interact visually as well. All of you, please switch on your video. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Nidhi. So uh, my, the topic for today is cyber safety and security uh, concerns. Yes, uh, cyber safety is a huge concern, as you all know. Uh, this is a topic which requires a lot of uh, conversation, a lot of safety tips, a lot of advisories. And uh, we don't have that much of time because uh, it's already we've, we've kind of uh, 15 minutes have gone by waiting for all of you to join. And then I just have about half an hour uh, because I also want to keep about uh, 10, 15 minutes for the question. So whatever best I can do in that uh, half an hour time that I have with you, I will do. I'll brush through a few slides, which I don't like to, but then uh, we actually have no choice because we have to finish on time for the next session. I'll be also asking you all questions uh, and then you will respond uh, by typing A, B or uh, whatever is the option that you choose to. So I look forward to your participation in this. So uh, the first question to you all, uh, let's start reflecting. Has the internet connected people together or the internet is isolating people even more? So, Whatever you feel, has it brought the people together or, or the people are becoming more and more within themselves? So type either A or B in the chat box. Whichever one you feel, you feel is right. Uh, Nidhi ma'am, uh, I request you to because I cannot open the chat box since I'm uh, uh, sharing. No problem, ma'am. I'll, I'll inform you. Some of the participants have written A, has chosen A, and some of the participants have chosen B, but some of them have chosen both. Yes, actually, the answer is both. Uh, internet, uh, in a way, internet has connected the people together. So like you and me are connecting today, and we are connecting, I'm connecting with so many of you from different states today, which would not have been possible otherwise. Would it have been? No, not at all. And so it has connected uh, uh, you with your friends who are uh, not in your neighborhood. It has connected you with the experts whom, with whom you connect on your subject matter. 
okay with your relatives with everybody so definitely internet has connected the people together and the people who have written a are absolutely right but the people who have written b are also right because if you see it is also isolating the people more and more like you know we start connecting with people outside a circle but at home or in a friend circle or in a relative circle you know or even when we go to the park all of us are in, you know we have that phone in front of us and then we are on the phone all the time so what has happened that we are not connecting with the people who are next to us our family members our close friends so much and but we are connecting with people who are outside so it is actually a combination of a and b and how you use the internet so if you if you are smart then you you will use the internet to connect very positively with people around you and also people people who are very far away from you so both are right so i just wanted to start this reflection that the internet is positive internet is for good internet has lot of potential but at the same time it is up to you how you use the internet how do you want to use the potential of internet for your growth now what i am telling you is the the tips that that i'm telling you are not only for you it is also for you to share with your students because each one of you is impacting so many so many lives aren't you so when we when you talk to your students you have to start to get them uh, thinking about it whether we are connecting more or we are getting isolated now this is from the uh, a little bit from the adults point of view and and a lot from the youth the students point of view so why people are going on the internet i think you know more than i during covid people were on the internet so much we were using internet for communication we were using internet for uh, accessing the services and uh, we were using internet for education i think in during the during the covid period it is the educators who use the potential of internet the most and each one of you is a pedagogist and tell me honestly how many of you were actually digital teachers four years back but being the dedicated teachers dedicated educators that you are all of you would have you know found ways and means to use the zoom platform to use the microsoft meet platform start using learning resources why because you did not want that the, that your students should suffer because of the pandemic situation isn't it so the pedagog so the pedagogists became the digital teachers or, or i should say the pedagogists like you became the techno pedagogists during that time and then you actually wore this new hat of pedagog of, of of a digital teacher so so fast so internet has huge potential we create on internet internet satisfies the curiosity google baba is always there you know all these search engines are there it provides us services <clears throat> there is lot of fun and adventure independence now fun adventure and independence doesn't apply so much to to senior people like us it is more for the young people the people who are 12 and above they want to go to the social media sites they want to play games they want to make new friends because they, there is a place an online place for them to do what they what they want and they feel that this online place is where their friends are so they, so they have a sense of belonging there and they voice their thoughts sometimes uh, uh, responsibly sometimes irresponsibly also so they are heard there and the very important thing which is also a very scary thing is the anonymity they think they can post and do anything online and under the pseudonym because some sites like discord and all that they uh, these are the gaming sites and a lot of gaming sites they actually encourage anonymity sites like facebook sites like instagram or twitter or linkedin they want people to use the the their uh, real names but these kind of gaming sites say that you can use an anonymous name so under anonymity the students start doing that the young people start doing the things which they are not supposed to recently i did a session for one of the schools and it was mostly on gaming apps 
and also the uh, chatting sites like discord and reddit now on the the school had a problem that you know the students because the, they felt that they are anonymous they were posting all wrong things all vulgar things and this is i'm not making up and this was from a school which was a very prestigious school the principal reached out and she said i really don't know the under anonymity they are posting very very you know not inappropriate to you know bordering to vulgarity they are posting those kind of things and they think that they are anonymous but they are not they are actually not because the uh, internet on the internet everything is permanent we might delete things from our so our timeline our social media timeline but these are there on the server and even if a person doesn't use his or her own name but they are logged in with the uh, with an email id which can be easily traced because you create an account all of you must be knowing about it any account that you have to create you have to use your email id and also when i am logged on like uh, i am logged on from my system in a remote place in north india right now okay and you are logged on from a remote place in northeast or wherever you are but the server will have the zoom server will have our all our ip addresses so even if my name may not go but the ip address will always be there so there is nothing called as anonymity online please convey it back to your students who think that under the anonymity thing they can do whatever they want to so again in a bit of a self reflection reflection how many times do you think young people check their phones in 24 hours the people who are between 13 to 25 or 20 years old so just type a b or c in the chat box so uh can you just type a b or c in the chat box miss uh, miss monica miss nidhi is anybody there yes ma'am yes ma'am because i cannot open the chat box. sure ma'am <laughs> so we've got 15 i can just see the number of responses so we've got 15 18 we've got uh, uh, how many people all together do we have 130 yes ma'am and uh, i think more need to participate maximum uh, participants have uh, written c few of them have written okay we'll wait for uh, 30 seconds more because uh, the answers are coming <laughs> Okay. Currently, there are one thirty participants, but if everyone joins, then it becomes more than one fifty. So we have more than fifty. Uh, uh, I think we have around fifty uh, responses. So by checking the phone, what does it mean? Checking the phone is when your phone rings, you check it. There's a message pinging. You check. when it doesn't even uh, let's say the you know for some people if the phone hasn't uh, made any sound in past 15 minutes they, then also they have a habit of checking that am i missing out on something i hope i didn't hear uh, didn't miss the pinging sound so it's a sort of a compulsion so uh, ma'am right now over 60 so how many participants uh, uh, so what is the uh, op option which people have chosen ma'am although all the options are chosen by the participants but uh, i can see that <coughs> maximum number of participants have chosen c but there are participants who have chosen a and b as well okay so c if if, if you go back on it c is the right uh, uh, answer because we don't realize that how many times you pick up the phone when it rings we pick up when it doesn't ring also we pick up why we pick up because there is fomo what is fomo fear of missing out i hope i haven't missed any message i hope uh, uh, you know my friends were not chatting and then i'll be left out and i'll be called a geek and i'll not respond so those kind of fear is there and this kind of use of like Let's say 150 times in 20, 24 hours is bordering on overuse, and overuse can become addiction very, very fast. So here we have to take care. We have to sensitize our students and the learners who who are associated with us. It is fine to have a phone, but it is not fine to feel you know funny, alienated when your phone is not around. 
I mean, imagine each one of you also imagine. Let's say we ask you to, uh, you know, hand over your phone for three hours. How will you feel? Just think about it. How will you feel? For three hours, you have uh, somebody has taken on your uh, uh, taken away your phone. I just want one one word in the chat box. Will you feel happy? Then write happy. You will feel angry, so write angry. Just write one one word in the chat box quickly, please. Then we'll move on. Because it is very important for me to bring out your feelings that uh, your feel, if you are feeling angry and if you are feeling unhappy or, or whatever you are feeling, can you imagine how the young people will feel who, uh, who don't, who even when they go to the bathroom, they don't uh, keep their phone outside or they keep the phone under their pillow when they sleep at night. So what are the kind of responses which are coming in? Miss Nidhi? Hello? Just a second, ma'am. The group is responding very well. I can see the numbers increasing uh, every second. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so they are writing uh, sometimes happy, tensed, risky, missing, mm -hmm. happy, incomplete, unhappy, strange, frustrated, uneasy, missing something. Mm -hmm incomplete, feel happy, I can do music that time, okay. wonder, stuck. Okay. okay, so I'm very happy with the people who've written happy. I mean, you, uh, you realize that how many things in life you're missing out. Like this person has written that I can then just concentrate on music. So phone is taking away a lot from us, not the, our time, our effort, our concentration. It is, internet is giving us a lot of positives, but then if we don't use it wisely, if we don't use it responsibly or in a balanced matter. So I just want you to think about it that, you know, the phone is taking away so much of your time and effort. And if the phone is taking, you know, our happiness is depending on phone just two three people have said happy the rest have said and then if that includes me even i would feel unhappy when if the phone was taken away from me so uh, we reached uh, more than 100 uh, uh, responses over here thank you so much for being so participative and this was just an exercise for you to self respect uh, retrospect okay now coming to the next part what are the words that come to your mind when we mention risks on the internet? What words come to your mind? Just uh, type again, please. When we say dangers on the internet, when we talk about risks on the internet, what are the words? Single, single words, or you can even write a phrase if you want to. And people, participants have started writing. We'll Type. give you 30 seconds, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, friends, for giving such good responses. I really appreciate it because as a teacher, you would realize that if the class is, uh, you know, in, you know, interactive with you, then there is so much of fun in teaching. So here I'm not teaching. I'm just guiding you, but then I also feel happy if people are responding uh, so well. Ma'am, we can start, uh, uh, Nidhi ma'am. Sure, ma'am. So participants have written hacking, threat, restless, virus, risk of privacy, fraud, radiation effect, malware, scam, invasion of privacy, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cyber Security Center, Danger, Threat, Identity, Theft, Phishing, <laughs> Creative Commons License. Yes, yes, very good point. That is plagiarism and uh, uh, copyright issues. So, uncertainty. Uncertainty. So I'm going to my next slide. So, uh, okay, uh, so, uh, so, so basically uh, you have written a few points uh, uh, which are uh, uh, concerned with the risk. So there is a lot of uh, hacking happening. There's a lot of blackmailing. How blackmailing happens? Because have you heard of the concept stranger danger? Okay, like we tell our small children, you know, when they grow up, 
uh, that don't take any sweet from the stranger, don't entertain with the stranger. But when we give these phone to our children, when we give access to smartphone and internet to our children, do we try to explain to them about stranger danger? No, we think just because a 13 year old is tech savvy, your yeah, children are definitely most uh, more tech savvy than us. Why? Because they are they were they are born and they are living in digital age. They are digital natives. While we people, the adults, are immigrants. Because let's say that uh, some of us in this group may have had the technology in their classrooms, but I'm sure not internet in their classrooms when they were growing up. But the kids of today have the, uh, the access to digital devices, also the technology in their classrooms. So we immigrants are little wary. But these natives, you know, they are very tech savvy. And we feel just because, uh, you know, uh, my student or my child, a 13 year old or an 18 year old, can do anything on the phone. And if I have an issue that, uh, you know, the person can log, uh, download an app or log me or do my financial transaction. So definitely they are tech savvy. But then we have to remember, friends, that they may be tech savvy, but they are they that experienced? No, that experience, that analysis, that critical thinking, that support has to come from us. So when we give the phone to our children or when our young children in the school, in the college bring the phone, then we have to also inform the parents that you have to talk to them about the good and the bad. And if the parents are not able to do that, because like I told you, many parents do not understand technology and internet, then we as educators have to st step in and have to include these kind of guidelines to, uh, with our students in our classrooms also. So there are a lot of risks on the internet and uh, you keep you keep on, uh, uh, I'm sure the financial scams and other things uh, uh, you keep on hearing all the time, <clears throat> but we don't realize that if a financial scam happens, a little bit of the money will go away. 50,000, 20,000, 1 lakh, 5 lakhs. But if these children do wrong on the internet, they are leaving back digital footprints. And these digital footprints are permanent. They can never be erased. I can erase, let's say, let's say a child has, a, a, a young person has you know, given some provocative or some racial, these kind of comments online. You know, after some time, uh, that person may delete, but then it has already been shared by so many other people. It has gone viral and it is always there in the servers. It may be deleted from my timeline. So we, you, we feel very happy that it is deleted from, from my timeline. And you think, you know, you, you happy, you're happy like an ostrich with the head buried in the sand. But on the internet, everything is always very viral and very public, and it can go out of hand. So these students' future can get compromised. Like I was telling you, the students were using gaming apps and Discord, and they were posting vulgar things. They thought they can put an, uh, you know, some anonymous name like Superstar or whatever it is. But they didn't realize that that account from where this uh, no, inappropriate words are being put so that account will always be attributed to them and their email ID. Even if they delete their email ID after some time. This, because that email ID will never go to anybody, which has once been used. And it will always be, and whatever is associated with that email ID will be attributed to them. So there are a lot of risks on the internet. Yeah, but the, we should use the potential of internet for our growth. So the, uh, let me talk about some risks. So privacy and personal safety, you know, a few of you mentioned the privacy and pers per personal safety risk. Privacy of data. Now, what happens? Now, let me, let me kind of give you examples in the educational institute. In a school, in a college, we have huge boundary walls, don't we? We've got huge gates with a security guard there. We don't allow anybody in. Then because we want to protect the students. Similarly, when we actually are doing online teaching learning, we must make sure that the platform where we are teaching learning uh, has to be safe. Because it is the duty of, a, of, a, of an institution, duty of a teacher to ensure the safety of the school. The similarly, the online safety also has to be totally, totally uh, managed by the educators and schools. Now in the, in, in the schools and colleges, we, the personal data of the students, it is kept in the, under the lock and key, isn't it? 
do we ever leak the students records no only the office staff have will have access to it is it and no nobody else except a principal so similarly when we are putting personal details of students online we have to be very very careful because the student data and student uh, uh, per, the personal data and student uh, academic data and health data is very very important so the, uh, so the personal safety of the student is even in the online mode is the responsibility of the school and college now the second is data and identity theft okay so uh, data stealing we all know and what is identity stealing identity stealing is when somebody assumes your name they hack into your account let's say that uh, somebody is uh, using whatsapp and uh, uh, whatsapp on uh, uh, web is very very dangerous and uh, whatsapp if you go to the settings under your uh, next to your uh, name it will also have a qr code you know the barcode can qr code and never share that qr code with anybody because if you are sharing qr code of your whatsapp you are actually giving the key of the whatsapp to somebody so let's say somebody says ki uh, you know just show me your qr code you share with them they take a photo they will have control over, uh, over the whatsapp and what they can do and assuming your name stealing your identity posing as you they can send messages to all the contacts because once they have the access to your whatsapp they have access to all your contacts all your uh, you know pictures and all your personal messages so they can assume you and start asking money and and uh, duping your own friends and uh, i am sure some of you would have come across that uh, you know uh, you getting a message that uh, i am stuck in uh, uh, at the airport i have lost my passport can you send me 10000 or my child or my wife needs surgery and uh, send me some money you will assume that this uh, this message is coming from a known source because xyz is your friend on whatsapp and then uh, you might send that person the money but that person doesn't even your friend doesn't even know that the message has been sent because his or her whatsapp has been compromised so that was the identity theft the next is online predators now who are predators we all know like in the jungle predators are the lions and the tigers who keep on searching for their prey and even the real life also there are predators on the road you know uh, we don't venture out at night because there are all sort of people on the road who are looking for you know to rob somebody or uh, you know uh, misbehave with somebody these are predators similarly the online space is full of predators and these are people who roam across who go to different uh, uh, accounts who survey actually the we click so they look at various accounts on the social media and and they are on the lookout for their uh, victims ओके okay, वो अपने शिकार को ढूंढते हैं और इनका काम ही यही है कि टू लुक फॉर द वीक लिंक्स टू लुक फॉर द प्रे एंड देन पाउंस ऑन दैट प्रे इन अ वेरी नाइस स्मार्ट सैवी मैनर पोजिंग एट सम एज समबडी दे आर नॉट सो लाइक द रियल लाइफ प्रिडेटर्स दे आर ऑनलाइन प्रिडेटर्स देन साइबर बुलिंग एंड ट्रोलिंग वी नो इज अ ह्यूज इश्यू and uh, see bullying has been there ever since bullying ragging but because it is cyber like i said in cyber everything grows uh, viral so there's a lot of bullying happens which leaves lots lots of emotional and physical uh, issues i'll i'll give you an example that we have a cricket team our indian cricket team is pretty well i mean uh, we are one of the best cricket teams in the world but if let's say some player loses and scores let's say duck in a couple of uh, uh, innings in a couple of matches then that person who was the star two days back starts getting trolled and he and his family getting death threats we all know the kind of uh, threats which uh, virat kohli got for his uh, six month old daughter if you would recall and so this is a big big issue especially where the young children especially where the youth are concerned young girls are concerned it can have a lot of impact on their psyche then next we come to inappropriate content so internet is full of content and we believe everything we see but like you know somebody said that somebody somebody can plagiarize somebody's work and uh, put it as their own and we think that if there is a statement or if there is a fact on the internet then it is true it is not true because today it is there tomorrow it may not be there so don't rely on information on the internet the second is 
that our students, our children get exposed to inappropriate contents online. So I'll be talking of ways and measures to actually stop that inappropriate content. So social, emotional, uh, social, emotional, uh, uh, and physical health concerns. The, all these cyberbullying, overuse of technology, uh, getting blackmailed, all these have emotional and physical health issues. So uh, we have to take care of our uh, young ones and we have to keep on guiding them. But how can we guide them when we are smart, when we are the role models, when we have the information, only then, then we can guide the others. So what are the few precautions that you should take? So sharing of personal information. In our real life, do we ever share information with anybody? Okay, do I go around saying that, you know, putting my, I've got a new photo, so I put it in the community center, I put it on the school notice board or somewhere. We can't think of doing those things. But in the online space, we behind the laptop, we think that everything is fine. Why we feel that is, let's say that each of you is now uh, actually accessing it in secure environment of your home or your institution. So psychologically, we are sitting in a secure place. So we think that nothing can happen to us, but we don't realize that whatever we are posting, our personal information that we are posting, it is in the big worldwide web. It is a deep and deep and dark web, and it can fall into, there are predators, like I said, and it can fall into wrong head, hands. So the students, the young people like to take selfie, but they don't realize that putting their selfies online, you know, these, these photos can be morphed. You know, the face can be theirs and the body can be doing any gestures and then they can be blackmailed. It can be put on the internet. There have been cases and of you know, the children actually committing, uh, the young people committing suicide. Recent case was a six and a half year old boy in US committed suicide. That was about three to four months back. Why? Because that boy was bullied so badly in his school for putting up some photos, that little six and a half year old child. And then every second day, because in Cyber Peace Foundation, we have the helpline and then we get these kind of distress calls. So what we can do is that not share the personal information, go to privacy settings. Have you ever, how many of you have ever actually gone back to your social media sites or even your Gmail and checked your privacy settings? Because when you create an account, and if you are above 18, then there is, you know, by default, everything is open to public. Because that's what social media platforms want you to do, because they benefit out of you. But all the social media platforms have, do have the responsibility of giving you an option to change your privacy settings. Every, whether it is Snapchat, whether it is TikTok or the Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you go on the right hand side top, you go to the settings and then it has the option of, you know, uh, uh, helping you change the settings from public to private. So we don't realize, we just kind of post things, uh, uh, post things to anybody, post things to friends of friends, post things to public. So very important takeaway from this session today should be to go back and check all your privacy settings and also guide your students for that. The second is, the third is registering for apps. Okay, we, we, we download a lot of apps. In the past few days, you might have been introduced to a lot of educational apps. Applications are very good, but we have to be responsible. We have to be smart that which apps do we should we download, which apps should not. We, we should not. So for example, there is an educational app for let's say algebra or, you know, uh, or even there is an app for let's say counting your steps, how many steps you walked or some health apps. So when you're downloading an app, first think, do you really need that app? If you need that app, then go and check, you know, before you actually click the download button, you should check, you should check the reviews of that app. What are the reviews of that app? What is the rating of that app? How many people are using that app? If it is the app is promoted by a well-known company and it has got good reviews, it has got good rating, four star, five star, and the numbers of, of users are also pretty large, then that app is safer. Otherwise, do not download that app. And when you download an app, 
also make sure what how much of information the app is taking because by default the, you know we, we start clicking yes 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 i agree because nobody wants to read all those fine print and all that so what you should do is you should see what information is essential for that app how will you see that every when you fill in your information in the boxes when you're downloading an app there will be some boxes which have asterisk so that the boxes which asterisk means that that information is essential and the boxes without asterisk means that that information is not essential you need not put it but we don't realize that you know people who are actually going on facebook registering for facebook for example i'm just giving an example of facebook the all the twitter and linkedin and uh, insta and all are the same so it asks for a lot of information your phone number your uh, date of birth your uh, house address and all those things you will find that none of these have the asterisk in front of them the social media platform is putting it there that if you want to share you share we don't realize it we just kind of put our entire information and what we do is that my phone number is there my name is there name of my children is there house address is there i'm going on a holiday to goa so i go to the airport or the railway station now i because i want to click a selfie and post it on the internet because that everybody is doing so i go on the i click my photo going to goa for a holiday with my family i've got my wife or husband next to me i've got my two children in front and then anybody can take because i have not made my settings as private these are public any tom dick and harry can access those so what am i doing i'm sharing all my information with everybody <clears throat> that i'm going on a holiday and come and rob my house my house is you know it is instances have happened where people have posted these details what happened to those good old times when we uh, you know even you know uh, when we go out we want to keep a light on so that nobody thinks that there's nobody in the house in a real life we still do those things if you're going out for dinner or for a wedding function you will tell your children that no no leave the veranda light on because you know otherwise somebody will will feel nobody's home and it's not it's, it's very dangerous but on the social media i will post going for this marriage or holiday and then my all my details are over there so these are the things which we also have to rethink then coming to passwords passwords are the key to the locker like we do not hand over the key of a locker to anybody similarly we should not be giving our password to anybody so moving on uh, the others are phishing smishing whaling these are kind of you know baits so what happens in phishing you put out a bait and the uh, and the, uh, you catch the fish similarly the bait over here is sometimes a text message that click on this link you will get new pair of shoes or you may get uh, uh, a message that uh, if you uh, give me your, uh, that uh, uh, you are entitled for a free holiday give your details so free holiday is a bait so you are blackmailed and then there is ransomware when all your data gets hacked from your computer and then you have to pay money for it so i'm going friends a little fast because of the time constraint so for this this is specially for the educators so protect personal details of your details and your students and if you have to post the activities of the of the school and college because one wants to show one wants to tell people that okay my institution if we do such so many activities you should either take the side pose or the back pose or you should blur the names and faces because then we are putting this uh, uh, the photographs of a students which can be compromised like i said third party apps no avoid avoid malicious links that is because this this will lead to you becoming a bait somebody fishing for you updated antivirus is very very important you know we spend so much of money we'll go for dinner and then we'll spend some 2000 bucks there but we will not want to spend 1000 bucks on antivirus so think about it i just want you to take back a lot of uh, uh, thoughts from here use original software buy one sari less do little bit of shopping less uh, go out a little less but when you are work 
working, you use original softwares because all these softwares have those security features in them. And then, you know, these security features keep on coming and you, you keep on updating your uh, uh, operating system. Freeware, avoid, there's nothing free in this world. Nobody's giving you anything free. So I also, I have already talked about stranger danger, inappropriate language, influencing and grooming is when these predators, they find a prey, maybe it's a child, you know, uh, 12 year, 14 year old, and they start talking, uh, you know, sexting them and talking, you know, go, uh, winning their confidence. And then they'll ask them to pose for photos and then share certain photos in certain way. And then the blackmailing starts. So these, uh, the children have to be totally sensitized. And uh, like I said that earlier, that a lot of inappropriate content is online. So we must ensure parental controls. There are a lot of parental control software which actually limit access uh, and they don't let you know the uh, certain videos and text or whatever pictures downloaded with certain inappropriate words. So uh, the content filters uh, should be uh, put and height faces and names have already said and hygienic digital habits we follow hygiene in a real life we must follow hygiene in our online world also in our practices in the online world also like i said cyber bullying leads to a lot of emotional issues health issues uh, addiction screen time uh, too much of addiction or too much of screen time leads to a lot of physical and emotional health now, internet has a lot of advantages. Tech supported has a lot of advantages in terms of flexibility, adaptability, affordability, and lots of resources. But there's a huge but over there. There are a lot of challenges also. So as educators, student safety is paramount and student data is massive, sense, a massive wealth of sensitive information. So it is your responsibility to actually protect the student data. Like I said, uh, earlier that we are responsible for student safety in the school. We are equally or even much more responsible for student safety in the digital space because it's a very, very dangerous space. So what is student data? You all know it is personal identifiable information, personal health data of students because the schools do collect, demographic details of students, academic information, testing performance data, behavioral details, photographs. If anything like this is get, is, gets leaked, it can impact the future of the child. So how do we do it? Like I said earlier, secure learning platforms, secure login credentials. Like I'll give you a quick example. You know, a class teacher is responsible for the academic marks and the personal data of all, the, all her class students. A subject teacher does not have access. She only has access to, she, can, she, she only has access to that particular, or she can share that marks of that particular subject. So a subject teacher has less access to the data of the student in the classroom, while a principal has total access of all the classes. So the principal is supreme. So this is level of hierarchy. The principal has access to all the data, the class teacher has access to the data of her class. Okay, a subject teacher has access to only the subject marks. So similarly, hierarchy has to be followed in online space. The password should not be shared with anybody, just like that. So a, a subject teacher should not have access to the information of the entire class. Okay, she ha only has to have access of the information of her own subject. So passwords should be hierarchical and they should be shared very, very carefully. The files, the data which is being shared, let's say I'm, I'm a math teacher and I'm sharing an Excel sheet which has the math detail or I'm sharing a question paper in Word. So all these should be password protected. Right click on that particular file and you'll get an option of, uh, 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 you know, give a password, give a password, send it to the subject class teacher and share the password. The, when the teacher gets it, she'll open with the password. This is just like you getting your bank statement online. So that's why banks maintain this kind of uh, privacy. Two-factor authentication is something like uh, you uh, in your home, you have a lock, but you put a double lock. Why do you put a double lock for more safety? So similarly, I can put a password 
and password people generally put very vague passwords because you know very common passwords because they think that they can't remember they won't be able to remember so along with the password if you put a two factor authentication then otp comes to your phone so that is a two factor authentication then uh, like i said limiting access and control manage user privileges is very very important in education because uh, you can't give access to everybody connected with the uh, uh, of, uh, you can't give access of the student data to anybody and everybody in the school then use end to end encrypted platforms what is end to end encrypted like whatsapp if i'm sending a picture or a text to somebody while it is traveling along on the routers on the way it is it is totally uh, uh, you know in ones and zeros nobody will understand it and when it reaches the user end then it gets back to its original form so if somebody is hacking those routers or, or you know the, while it is traveling even if somebody hacks it they will not be able to understand the information like whatsapp is end to end encrypted so include digital citizenship modules in the curriculum it's very very important a, a lot of schools uh, like in especially even you know sc schools and colleges have the uh, you know they they teach civics and other things so digital citizenship as a module in your civics class is very very important and even if it's a science stream uh, this should be a chapter should be included in the curriculum then capacity building of students teachers and office staff is very important on regular basis not that you okay today you've done the uh, uh, capacity building program as some program has been conducted and you may think for 3 years i'm i'm good but no every time every year because technology changes and the risks also change so every year then like i said hygienic practices are important so computer teachers should run hygiene test on all the machines school counselors need to have the reporting or helpline numbers and parents should be involved in the uh, committee and group the last is we we have dramatics club carpentry clubs and so, so many clubs in the school start having a cyber safety club also in your school or college so friends the assignment for you today is go back check the previous settings so once you check the privacy settings make everything private and only for friends and then guide your learners guide your students guide the younger ones okay so check and edit access to personal data and the other is that you must have subscribed to so many apps so you can open those apps and check what all data at that app is taking let's say it's a like i said algebra app now algebra app will give you an option should i have access to your contacts your gallery why should algebra app have contact to access to your contacts and gallery but go and uncheck it because this is not a required information this is a this is not an essential information so go back and check your apps the platforms check the privacy settings on your social media profiles i'll take one minute about it there are various ways of educating the uh, uh, children one is sessions like this but in our organization we feel that uh, we you have to employ multiple uh, techniques like as teacher we teach but we also give them hands on practice so our e raksha competition which ncrt and uh, cyber peace foundation have launched is something similar in this competition cyber safety competition we encourage the students on actually thinking about being online safe and then when they think about being online safe then bring out your thinking in the form of a poster in the form of a banner a painting or a video or an essay or an app so you know so let's say a student wants to uh, write a <clears throat> write one paragraph write an essay or a blog to write an essay or a blog a student and teacher will think about the uh, concept about cyber safety will do research on the internet and while the student while the participant is doing all this research there will be so much of automatic learning would would it not so we thought that instead of only teaching because ncrt does so many programs the programs like this every friday we have cyber they organize cyber jagrukta program and besides this also uh, every week every second third day there is some program on the other on pm e vidya channel that is one way to actually educate the people the other way is to include them that uh, you don't give them a fish you tell them to actually fish for a fish 
okay then they then they learn uh, uh, better so e raksha is a is an online cyber safety competition uh, where the participants can actually submit their entries online in digital format and uh, a little bit more and it is actually promoting safer responsible and peaceful use of internet uh you can register on www.eraksha.net i will put the uh, link on the chat box so that you can copy and paste and or you can right now take a photograph of it and scan the qr code and <clears throat> actually save the uh, website url so that is that can be done this competition is open for students from class 3 to class 12 in the schools it is also open to the college students that is a student part of it this competition is again open to the te school teachers and college teachers the faculty anybody can participate there are different categories and it is also open to the parents so even the parents can participate that how for For example, they are using parental control. They can just give a write up of how they are using parental control. We've had fantastic entries. Uh, the winners of 2019 contest, they the that group of students from a particular school in Delhi created a rap song on cyber safety. So now that rap song has become so viral. Anybody who listens to it, it's got such a deep meaning. So they got a prize for it. For example, or there was a. Uh, a student a college student who created a uh, a, a safety uh, <laughs> net on the mobile phone like you know uh, it had three layers of safety on the mobile phone for, for the children okay so a kind of a parental control and inappropriate language screening so these are the kind of things and then you know a class 6 student winning the prize because he or she had put a beautiful banner you know some caption some nice banner with nice photos and nice messages so uh, anybody can participate so please encourage go back and encourage your people to participate in this uh, contest and uh, i'm from cyber peace foundation and uh, this is please take the photograph of this also uh, we have a helpline 24 by 7 helpline uh, uh, we get lot of distress calls so you can call any i hope nobody needs a helpline nobody in crisis but if anybody whom you know is in crisis can actually get back to us call us any time of the day or you can also mail us at helpline at cyberpeace.net um uh, nidhi ma'am if i have a couple of minutes can i quickly share e raksha website sure ma'am yeah okay. yes ma'am you can so i'll quickly take you through the e raksha website and uh, share it with uh, uh, your students or teachers or colleagues whosoever and ask them to participate is my screen visible so, yes ma'am it is visible so this is the e raksha we we launched ncert and cyber peace launched this competition online cyber safety competition in 2019 <laughs> so a journey is from 2019 2020 and 2021 you can go on this website eraksha www.eraksha.net i will put it in the chat box okay and uh, your students can register online and a little bit about the competition the uh, participant group and other things so one minute my website is a bit uh, slow okay so these are the various competitions uh, the participants under arcade the uh, uh, you know the participants can submit drawing painting comics memes stickers under word hack stories essays blogs articles research papers uh, students can also create drama song documentary a mock interview and under tech avishkar software software or hardware or app uh, uh, development so all these uh, 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 and uh, you know uh, anybody who's interested in whichever if somebody has an artistic bent of mind or somebody can write well or somebody does research well it depends on what you can do then who can participate 
uh, category one is students classes three to five then six to eight, then nine to 12, and then college students. We have different evaluation criteria for each of the uh, categories. Like for three to five, our evaluation criteria will be different, obviously, than nine to 12 and colleges. The second category of participation is the educators, where the school teachers and faculty from colleges can participate. The third category is the educational institute. If as an institute, you have organized some sessions, awareness sessions, you have a club, or you have organized some kind of quizzes or some kind of games or, you know, so those uh, uh, educational institutes can also participate. We have got separate prizes for them. And then parents and guardians. The last category is cyber peace honors. If you know of any organization or private organization, government organization, or an individual doing a lot of work in the cybersecurity, or if you have done it yourself, then you can also participate. The uh, timelines of this uh, 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 competition, uh, we, have the, we have it open till the 31st of uh, uh, January, uh, but then please apply at the earliest, okay? And uh, uh, so th these are the timelines. We launched on 28th of October. And uh, by 31st of January will be the last day of registration. We will announce the results on 30th March and April we will have the face-to-face -face award ceremony where it's, it's uh, like your ICT awards only where uh, we actually get the people to Delhi and we honor them uh, with the uh, good prizes. I also want to add all participants with valid entries. With valid entries, get digital certificate. Then we also give certificate of merit, etc. This uh, uh, participation uh, for this contest is only online through digital format. It is totally free of cost. There's no money assigned to it. And, uh, uh, and you can submit your entries both in English or Hindi. And it is a collaborative effort, which is led by <coughs> NCRT and Cyber Peace Foundation. So please encourage your people to participate in this uh, uh, contest. And uh, uh, I want to once again, uh, thank you all. And I also want to share uh, the assignment um, uh, once again with you so that you don't forget that what is your assignment, uh, the, what is your assignment, for, what is your takeaway from this uh, session? So when each of you go back, then please uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, you are doing the assignment that I told you. And at the same time, wait, uh, just a minute. This is it. Uh, <clears throat> that you are checking and editing the privacy settings on the social media platforms, Google, everywhere uh, of your own. You are encouraging your students to do that. The second is that you're checking and editing the access that that you have given to your personal data to the learning apps or platforms or any other apps and platforms. If you do that, then you will be a safe user, a safe and a smart user of internet. So that's all from me today. And uh, I'm open to any questions. I would request participants to <coughs> please either write your questions in the chat box or directly ask by unmuting yourself. I have shared the uh, URL of the e-Raksha website. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Shubhra Das from Diet Kirby Anglong. So my question is this, uh, till today we have provided so many, uh, in so many sites, our email ID and we have accessed so many things and hmm. we don't know those sites now. So there is some technique to remove that information, to delete that information from that site, but uh, with the, by using third party application again. So is this is good or? Uh, sir, is that, that's why we tell you to be very careful. So uh, what happens is that we actually uh, start to give our information to so many apps and so many platforms. Somebody says that this is a good site. We quickly put up details in there. Uh, you can't take it back. I mean, you can, uh, Google is one organization and you can tell them or Facebook, you can tell them that remove me, but actually you will not be removed from the server. Uh, 
and you cannot have those apps etc you cannot tell them to give your details back they you know what will they do uh, 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 they will say okay we've done it but then it will be there in the servers at the back always so the thing is you be cautious before sharing your personal details kehte hai na ki once the bird has flown the nest you cannot get the bird back so i think it is better na we can uh, prepare uh, we can make some different email id for different purposes for social yeah. media it is uh, different for banking purpose it is different for share marketing it is different in this way we can maintain some privacy or uh, it, it is a good it is a good suggestion if you can maintain so many ids and password uh, like your uh, banking uh, id uh, will be your own id okay you cannot but you know for social media you can use a different id Uh, and uh, uh, for may, maybe logging on to apps you can use a different id but you have you will have to manage all these different ids of yours so that also can be an issue oh, oh we have same phone number but yes. we will have same phone number uh, phone number will be the same so in any case that there is no anonymity there is no secrecy there is actually no privacy yeah, it is, online it is, there is no yeah whenever we are online means we are not private You know, so somehow private. we can yeah. somehow we can reduce the uh, vulnerability in this Sir, way. Sir, you are asking wonderful questions and you are also giving wonderful solutions to it. I really appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. So I have a question in the chat box that I always forget my password and ask for assistance from Google. So is it risky to put new passwords again and again, madam uh, or sir? I would uh, uh, suggest. that uh, um, you know let's say you have a password on a social media so maintain a small physical diary and don't give the diary to anybody don't carry your diary around and you know let's say devote uh, let's say you have an instagram account okay so then give two small pages to that instagram account and every 3 months you change your password so you will have okay i have changed the password on 10th of november on 10th of december on on the 10th of february so always write it there so that you don't forget and uh, uh, don't keep on going back to try not to go back to google all the time and uh, because every time you go back to google it will ask you for more details so try not to do that and maintain your uh, passwords in a small diary never maintain your passwords on your phone because if a phone gets lost then all your data in the phone or your information in the phone your uh, contacts your uh, pictures and the passwords of all the sites will also go and also we can uh, maintain the password in encrypted form suppose my password is shubhra i can write shubhra 25 so no one can steal now uh sir uh, there are uh, uh, programs that the hackers are very smart okay so your name is shubhra and 25 you are writing probably 25 is associated you were born on 25th you got married on 25th or something so let's say if you have put all your details on on the internet and uh, with your name so there are even softwares which use permutations and combinations to get to the password so let's say a hacker is trying to steal so the hacker will use 1 2 3 4 times uh, you know 5 uh, uh, times 6 times the hacker may succeed so give strong passwords definitely that's a deterrent absolutely a deterrent and don't uh, uh, save your passwords online never save your password on the password uh, protector or I'm password i'm not asking using password in online means my friends here even cannot steal my password whenever they got the diary if i misplaced the diary or i lost the diary even the, uh, means the normal people cannot use the diary that is the, the thing I, otherwise password uh, they don't need our password they can crack the password by using different applications yeah that's what i'm saying a common but you know your friends uh, are not hackers okay so the, they will never be able to guess but a hacker by using the permutation and com combination of all the data the hacker has of you or all the all the social media platforms can create a profile and through the applications can create uh, you know get the get to the password okay so your password has to be a combination of upper and lower case alpha numeric and numeric and special characters thank you very much madam for explaining thank all you, this sir for asking good questions Actually, I realize that these things should be uh, shared to all of us. That's why I put this question here. Thank you, sir. Any more questions, Nidhi, ma'am?
I was also about to ask the same. Thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much to all those participants who have participated, but uh, it would be great if other participants will also um, clear their uh, confusions or any kind of query if they have, this is the right time to ask because uh, many times we have confusions while using internet, but uh, at that time we do not have any resource person to answer. Right now we have a resource person with us. So you should so one use more this opportunity. Person, uh... One more additional sure, uh, thing I want to ask, but it is not regarding the same. I have seen that uh, there are some uh, e-license or bundle license are given for paid software. And as we are dealing with the nation, uh, this is the Indian education system and we are the main body, means you are the main body and we are the your hands. So I think you can provide us those registration and we can pay less, less, less than the actual price and we can get access those application those wonderful application and we can, we can create a wonderful uh, e-content so sir uh, this session is not in the uh, realm of what the question that you are asking i understood uh, but there is no chance to ask these things <laughs> <laughs> this because we don't provide these kind of facilities we give you the measures on how to be safe online and regarding the purchase of software, et cetera, we don't have any solution. Uh, that you have to manage uh, on your own. I, you know, we don't have, that is why I'm asking, we should need these things because we are uh, in the Indian education, uh, we are dealing with the nation. Nah? So we can do these things from, we can ask government to provide these things. We will buy, no doubt we are not asking free of course, we'll buy definitely, but uh, we can get bundle license so that we can, education license are there, for example, we can buy Apple laptop by education uh, certificate. But in India, it is very difficult to get those uh, discounts. That's why we can provide these things. We can access those things. Uh, Sir, you can approach uh, Microsoft, Google, and other software developers. And uh, they do have- The approach should be from schemes. your side, madam, because the organization should be approached because they need the organization email ID. We cannot- uh, well, personally by, by do email. I mean organization should approach. Uh, to get these kind because these people do have these schemes uh, uh, sometime or the other okay or some uh, one person is saying that uh, uh, whatever we've learned till now about apps all of these apps are free so is it also uh, risky to click on these links as you said earlier we should not click on free apps sir let me ask you in this uh, uh, you know life and time uh, sir or madam uh, uh, let me ask you, will, why should anybody who does not know you give you free stuff? Even your known people will not give you free stuff. Okay, so th there are those kind of uh, uh, messages floating around that Adidas is giving free shoes, Cadbury is giving free chocolate, somebody is giving free holiday. Madam, in return, they are asking a lot of information from you. And your information is more important than your gold, silver, or anything because your information is the new oil. They thrive on your information. They will use your information to get into your uh, banking and other details. So you have, sometimes we feel, okay, that person is asking for my information and giving me free thing. Madam, your information is the most valuable thing right now. Let's say you share your personal details with somebody and you get a free meal. But what happens, that person can put the pieces of your profile from social media, what you have given together and hack into your bank account. So you have to think about this. There's nothing free in this world. Okay, on the chat box, I don't have any more questions. Uh, yes, so do we have any other query or should we wind up? Okay, so since uh, many participants have already asked queries side by side the session and after the session also, so now I would like to thank Ms. Nisha Dua for giving us this valuable information and for uh, making us aware of what all problems can arise if we do not stay careful while using internet. So thank you so much, ma'am, from my side also and from the side of participants as well. Uh, you're, you're more than welcome, ma'am. It's always a pleasure to interact with CIT, NCRT and uh, uh, do the sessions. Thank you so much, all of you. The success of this will depend upon 
uh, how much of it you are applying in real life and how much uh, and how many of you do the assignment that i have asked you to do so please don't take these things uh, uh, lightly and uh, go back and apply the learnings in your real life thank you so much for having me here thank you